What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video, I want to talk about stacking junk silver or constitutional silver. So this is your 90% dimes, quarters, half dollars. I'm actually going to unbox some half dollars, add them to my guardhouse box. But one of the main things I want to talk about is the problems associated with stacking junk silver, because <laughs> there are quite a few. Thank you so much for watching my video. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, so let's get these half dollars unboxed. And as we do that, I want to talk about the four main issues with stacking junk silver. The first of which is going to be availability. Now, junk silver... Obviously, there's a limited supply of it. They're not making any more. So, if all of it is uh, effectively sold out, then it's kind of hard to find junk silver. Now, I know, obviously, people are going to liquidate. They're going to sell it back to the bullion dealers or the coin shops or whatever. So, there's always going to be some junk silver floating around. But that is a problem with it. The price is solely based on supply and demand. Which actually, I guess it's not the worst thing. But if you are trying to stack, then obviously the price and premiums could be a lot higher than you're hoping for if the availability is low. And uh, by the way, I just want to say a huge thank you to Silver Chimp for throwing in a few silver quarters with this package. But in regard to availability, I mean, we've actually seen premiums go up quite a bit over the last, uh, I would say, few months. We've seen junk silver kind of skyrocket in price, and that's just because there's not a lot of it available. So if you're trying to stack junk silver in the future, be willing to pivot and <laughs> change your strategy if you find that the premiums are too high. Because right now, I would say the premiums are definitely on the higher side. Uh, they're not extremely high. They're not as high as stacking silver eagles, for example. But it probably is more expensive for you to go out and buy junk silver half dollars than it would be to buy silver rounds at this point in time. Now the next problem or issue with buying junk silver is that you need to authenticate every single piece that you buy. Now this is not the end of the world. I mean you are going to have to authenticate every single piece you buy if you're buying silver rounds or American silver eagles. You want to go through your stack make sure it's all real and legitimate. And you actually could use one of these Sigma Metalytics precious metals verifiers, throw every single coin on there, make sure they're all legit. And uh, you know, actually, if you wanna pick one of those machines up for yourself, I will have a link down below in the description where you can actually get a discount on one of those machines. But the issue with junk silver in particular is that if you're stacking, for example, the Kennedy half dollars, you have to go through them and make sure every single one is dated 1964. This was the only year that they made the Kennedy half dollars out of 90% silver. So it could take quite a long time, especially if you're buying huge bags of junk silver, to go through every single one and make sure all the dates are correct. Another one is Washington Quarters and Roosevelt dimes are actually probably the worst. You might have to turn into Scrooge McDuck and uh, break out your magnifying glass, check out every single silver dime and make sure the dates are correct. So this could take uh, quite a while and uh, that's why I say it's kind of a problem or issue with buying junk silver. But if you like going through your silver coins and looking at them anyway, then I guess it's not the end of the world. But I know some people, they just don't have the time to authenticate every single coin. So if you are buying them in bulk, that's definitely something you'll have to think about. Now, the third issue with buying junk silver is the abrasion or accidental abrasion problem. The silver loss from the older coins. I guess you could say attrition. I was trying to think of an A word because we already had availability, authentication, and I'm like, let's go with the trend. Uh, I actually can think of an A word for someone who sits there and wears down my coins, <laughs> but we won't go there. Uh, so anyway, it is just basically silver loss. That's what a lot of people complain about on some of the older coins. And let me explain exactly what I'm talking about here. So I have 20 of 
the Kennedy half dollars and actually let's put them in one of these tubes so it makes it easier to see. And we also have 20 of the walking liberties. Look at that, it just barely fits. I mean, it is like coming out of the top there. Um, and then watch this, when I put the walking liberties in a tube, probably won't even go all the way up to the top. Look at that, you got a little bit of room at the top on that one. So that's what we're talking about with silver loss. The older coins have less silver in them. And that is not a huge deal unless you're actually going to be selling these for the silver content. And I don't know really why you would do that. Maybe you're selling them to a refinery who's going to melt them down, which I actually have a problem with that. I don't think you should be melting down old historical U.S. coins. But uh, some people really care about the silver loss. So let's first weigh the Kennedy half dollar roll. That is 8.33 troy ounces. And it does have the plastic tube there, but this also has a plastic tube. That one weighs 8.18. So clearly there's less silver in the older coins. And we don't have to do such a small sample. I mean, I could weigh all of my Kennedy half dollar rolls. 8.31. Let's do another one. 8.30, you get the picture. We got a walking liberty, 8.04. Let's do one more walking liberty, 8.12. So clearly the older coins have less volume of silver. So to me, that's not the end of the world. I mean, some people actually will only buy the Kennedy half dollars because they weigh more. Um, also the Benjamin Franklin rolls, these are a favorite among stackers because they don't look like the Kennedy half dollars. They've got a little bit more meat on the bones, right? 8.28 there. Uh, let's do one more Benji roll. 8.29. So the Benjamins are kind of the best of both worlds. You get a coin that is clearly silver. The Kennedy half dollars, not all of these were made out of silver. So, you know, that's one thing people care about. All of the Benjis were silver and there's less wear. So that's actually kind of uh, some people's favorite half dollar to stack is the Benjamin Franklins. And it's not just the half dollars that have this problem. It's the quarters, it's the dimes, it's everything. Here is a tube of Roosevelt and a tube of Mercury dimes. Let's weigh the Mercury dimes, 4.03. And then let's weigh the Roosevelt dimes, 4.25. So a lot less wear in the newer Roosevelt dimes compared to the older Mercury dimes. So just something to consider when you're stacking junk silver, the older coins will have more wear. Now the fourth and final issue that people have with buying junk silver is the acquisition cost or the price to buy it. For some reason, people just don't understand how much they're paying because when you buy junk silver, you pay based on a factor of the face value, not on the price per ounce. For example, if you buy a silver round, it'll be $25 or $28 an ounce. But when you buy junk silver, it'll be 20x or 21x face value. And if you don't know what that means, you have no idea how much you're paying. So I actually did a video explaining in detail how to figure out the price you're paying for junk silver. I will put that link up in the corner as well as a link down below in the description. So definitely check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to price because it will help you out immensely. But if I could sum it up, it would basically be $1 face value times 1.4 will give you the price per ounce. So 20 times 1.4 is 28. So if you're paying 20x face value, you're paying $28 an ounce. If you're paying 21x face value, you're paying $29.40 an ounce for your junk silver. So if the spot price is $22.40 and you pay 21x, then guess what? You just paid a $7 premium on your junk silver. Again, it's kind of hard to understand if you're not familiar with it, so definitely go check out that video. But um, anyway, those were the four issues or problems that people have with junk silver. There are probably more than just that, but those were the first four that came to mind. Actually, we're gonna rearrange these, try and get all the Benjamin Franklins in the same area. There we go. And then we have three uh, half full or partially full tubes. And that is how much we now have in the guardhouse box. 
So yeah, we're over halfway done. I'm really happy with the progress I've made on this guardhouse box. It's been a lot of fun stacking it. If you have any questions about Junk Silver, feel free to put those down below in the comment section. And I do want to say a massive thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you all in the next one. Silver Dragons, out.